and I am a three-time recognized IBM champion. I have over 25 years of AIX experience and over 20 years of high availability and disaster recovery experience, primarily with PowerHA and HACMP. And today I'm going to give an overview and a demonstration of a new tool that was added in PowerHA version 721 called CLEZ Update. First, CLEZ Update, as the name implies, is just a single step way to update the cluster in a non-disruptive fashion. So as the name implies, I only have to run this once. If all goes well, it will actually update every node in the cluster, and it doesn't matter which node in the cluster you execute it from. So this tool was introduced in the first service pack of PowerHA721. Um, it's completely automated. It will actually work with a uh, NFS mount or a NIM server set of resources. I'm actually going to show the NIM server method. And it also provides a series of pre-installed checks to try to ensure the likelihood of success when you uh, run this tool. So the link at the bottom of the page, that takes you to the command reference for uh, the 721 version. And what does it do? Well, overall, it does a lot of things. Uh, first, it will check to see that the images that you're trying to install are actually supported on the AIX level your cluster nodes are already running at. So, of course, that's very important because if it's not supported, then you can't use the tool because you're going to have to update or upgrade AIX first. It makes sure that CLComD is functional and that all the nodes and the resources are uh, stable, no errors, so it validates what the state of your cluster is. It also does a bit of reverse engineering by looking at your Etsy NIM info file to find out what your NIM server is to communicate with the NIM server. So if you're using a NIM resource, um, there's actually a way you can query and get a list of resources that's available to each node in the cluster. And then it also helps um, for you to pick the right resource name of what you're going to execute from the command line to run the update from which resource. So it will actually perform a test of an NFS mount from the NIM server to your cluster nodes. Um, in my experience, um, since usually the service address is in place, you need to make sure that the service address is resolvable by your NIM master. Typically, that's in DNS. In my lab environment, I had to put it in Etsy host because the first time I ran this tool, um, my test on the NFS mount actually failed. So I added the service IP address to the Etsy host on my NIM server and all was fine. It actually performs a second NFS mount, much like when you perform a NIM install where you have your um, node script for the install. There's actually a script that is generated and NFS exported from the NIM server. Now that NFS export is done to the node specifically, so it's not exported to everyone. So I also had a failure on that NFS mount, uh, not because my service IP was not in Etsy host on the NIM server, but because my service IP was listed first on my interface, which is the default for PowerHA. Um, how I actually got around that was I changed the service IP distribution policy to disable first alias. And if you look on my channel here, I do have a demo on how to perform that change. So it compares and makes sure that all your PowerHA file set levels are the same and that the same file sets are installed on all nodes. Um, when I did the test the first time, I actually had the um, GUI, the SMUI file sets, uh, server installed on one and not the other. It was just a warning, so it didn't look like it was going to prevent it from failing, but I did remove it just to make it uh, consistent. So then it also makes sure that the existing power HLA, HA levels you have installed uh, do not need to be committed or uh, rejected. And then it will actually perform a preview install of the update. Again, anytime we do updates, it's always a good idea to do a a preview to greatly maximize the chance 
of success. So those are all the checks that it performs. And when you actually tell it to perform the update, here's what it does is if the node is currently hosting a resource group, it actually stops the cluster services on that node and puts the resource group in the unmanaged state. This is where the non-disruptive update comes into play because it leaves the resources alone. It just no longer monitors or will respond while it's in that unmanaged state. If the node is not hosting a resource group, it simply performs a graceful stop of the cluster. The Historical terminology was a graceful shutdown. The option is actually to stop the cluster services and bring the resource group offline. However, if the node is not hosting a resource group, it really does not bring the resource group offline. It just fully stops cluster services and takes that node uh, out of the cluster as an active member of the cluster. So then it performs the update all if it was stopped gracefully before, it restarts it fully again using the manual mode for the management option. If it was stopped unmanaged before, it's restarted in automatic mode. Now, anytime you manage, or let me back up and say, when you unmanage and then remanage a node with a resource group, and you are not using application monitoring, it will actually end up performing a execute on your application start server script. So what this means is you need to either have a smart script in place to detect if the app is already running. If so, then do nothing. Or you can also replace the script with a temporary dummy script with an exit zero or you could just simply edit your start server script for the time being and put an exit zero at the beginning of it, re let it restart um, the resource group in the managed state, and then rem remember to remove the exit zero. I personally have forgotten in the past to remove the exit zero, and it caused me some unnecessary grief. But please be aware of that. This is not unique to CLEZ update. It is unique to performing a stop unmanaged and remanaging again. So several things um, you can encounter that with, which is the integrated live partition mobility support and live kernel update support could also encounter uh, this situation as well. So please be aware of that because um, it could cause an outage if you have your app script like stop and restart if it's detected running. Uh, you generally do not want that to happen. So when can I use it? Well, right now there's only a couple levels we can use it on. So this is used for the PowerHA file set specifically. You can use it for loading an SP. You can also use it for performing an upgrade. Um, again, I mentioned in the, in the check conditions that the AIX levels must support what the target level is you're trying to uh, move to. Uh, it can also be used for iFixes. I have not used it for iFixes myself. I have not tested that, but I have done the following two things listed on here. And the first one on this list is what I'm going to perform in this demo, which is I have 721SP1 installed currently, and we're going to perform an SP2 update non-disruptively. Uh, just a couple of quick links. If you're watching this, you're probably on my YouTube channel. Uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter. And for a good source of PowerHA, information like the red books, white papers, these demos, and other things, check out the PowerHA wiki. So now I'm going to flip over to my uh, demo environment. Okay, so on the top here is my primary node, Jessica, and the bottom is my backup node, Jordan. I have QHA running here just to show what's going on on the cluster, so it's stable. All my resources are on Jessica, and <clears throat> you can tell here that I'm running 7211. Now, I showed at the beginning um, of the screen up here that my AIX level is 715SP1 on both nodes in the cluster, and actually shortly after I updated the AIX levels, I ran into problems uh, syncing my cluster, and come to find out there was a known problem with CLComD, 
and it actually affects multiple versions of AIX, 714, 715, 72. Um, so this exact iFix was for the 715 SP1. Uh, I strongly encourage getting this iFix um, for your level. Uh, it will save you a lot of grief. It actually drove my cluster nuts for two days straight until uh, I found this problem and the iFix seemed to resolve it. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to run this Q option to query the NIM server to find out what resources does each node in my cluster actually have access to. Now I don't have a bunch of uh, LPP sources built and you can see here I have a list of about a half dozen or so and both nodes can see the resource that I'm concerned about which is my SP2 resource. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run a preview of installing this. So if I run the preview, which similar to the install commands, the flags are, are pretty intuitive. The minus capital P is for preview, the V is for boast, the S is for the source. Um, I have found that I can combine the flags as shown here. The other examples I've seen in the man pages and stuff has all the flags separated. I've also seen both the minus capital V is in Victor and little v is in Victor. Uh, both seem to work for verbose output, and the same thing for capital S is in SAM and little s is in SAM um, for the source. What is the source that you're going to use for this update? So the documentation doesn't show that both capital and lowercase um, are functional, but it does seem to work. It's also been my limited experience that the minus capital V for verbose, I really don't see a difference. So maybe the basic command is giving us all the verbose output anyway. So we can see here that the things that I mentioned that it does, you know, checks the AIX levels, checks the system mirror level, make sure CLCOMD is working, checking information for the NIM server, checking the LPPs, um, iFixes, make sure they match. Um, I actually ran into a defect or I guess the, I hate to say defect, it's a error condition enhancement. So I mentioned in my um, introduction to CLEZ update that it performs a NFS mount. And when my initial NFS mount behind the scenes was failing, it was actually giving me an error that my file sets did not match uh, between the two nodes. And when I actually viewed the log and back up in the log, I, I found that that indeed was not the case. Um, so just something to be aware of. Uh, so the, the preview of install says that it's going to work. So now I'm going to actually run the apply, uh, just as the case. Most times when you're just doing an update, it's probably a good idea to install and put it in the applied state instead of the committed state. So if um, any unforeseen event happens and it's undesirable to stay at the levels that you updated to, you can easily reject those levels and back up to the previous level. So just like the preview, it's doing a lot of these same checks to make sure that the environment is okay before actually performing the install. So again, at the end here, it's gonna do a preview install on each node of the cluster, and then it'll actually go through and stop the node. So now it's stopping Jordan to get ready to perform the update. So you can see that it voted. Jordan is actually ST init. This means that he is no longer active in the cluster. I can see from my output from CLEZ update, it says Jordan is offline, and it indeed is. And now it's actually applying the updates on Note Jordan. Now this is only going to take a couple of minutes, um, but I am going to uh, let this run. Well, it actually blinked off and on real quick. Uh, for just a second, the STNIT went away and then it came back. Uh, that's usually a sign that the uh, cluster manager daemon has been updated. 
So now the apply is finished. I'm starting just Jordan again. So he's going to rejoin the cluster. And of course, as you know, anytime a cluster start is performed, it does a cluster verification before starting. So of course, now I'm getting all these warnings that my file set levels are different between the two nodes. Well, of course it is. I just updated one and I haven't updated the other one yet. So that's completely okay. Um, not too concerned about the warnings. Of course, if they were errors, we would be greatly concerned. So now Jordan is joining the cluster and it is now stabilized. So now that it's stable, it's going to continue on and repeat the update on Jessica. So you can see that it's stopping Jessica, but it's stopping it in unmanaged mode. So it's not a full cluster stop like it was before. You can still see that it's registering stable. It's not showing ST init and that my resource group is in the unmanaged state. My service address is still in place and my volume group and file systems are still active. So this is going to take about a minute or so uh, for this update to complete. So I'm going to pause the recording just for a few seconds while we wait for this. Now you can see this one actually went into STM NIP mode and it disappeared. So normally when you see that disappear, that's a quick telltale sign that cluster manager has probably been updated right during that point. Probably cluster ES server RTE update was being applied at that time. Okay. So the update has completed. Now it's restarting Jessica. And you're going to see Jessica rejoin and stabilize. But there's really not much for it to do um, because the resources are already active. So all of our file set warning levels, you know, the warnings that we got with file set level mismatches, those are gone now because our levels match again. So we're waiting for Jessica to finish starting. And there it is. So the cluster is stable. And our update is completed. So now, because I've had QHA running the whole time, it hasn't refreshed the level that it's running on. So if I actually get out of this and get back into it, you will now see that it says 7212. And if I do CLCMD on HA level minus S, you will see that I have 721SP2 on both nodes in the cluster. So that is performing a non-disruptive update using the CLEZ update tool. Now, the next thing I would normally do, which is gonna be boring to see, is now that I've done the apply, I would re-execute it and tell it to commit it. So I would run the commit option. And once everything's committed, then I'll probably turn around and try to do another demo on CLEZ update of going from 721SP2 to the new version of 722 itself. So with that, while this is running, again, all this is doing is performing a commit on each node of the cluster. Um, I'm actually going to wrap up this demonstration, just like with any of my other videos. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment sections below. Also, my email address was listed at the beginning of the presentation here. Uh, feel free to drop me an email, and if I can help anyway, I would be glad to assist. So as always, thank you for watching.